Hey guys, welcome back to the channel DC Can Toys, where I do reviews and share my thoughts on some of my favorite toy releases. Today we'll be looking at the Mayfix number 109 Spider Man Peter B. Parker from Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. So let's check out the box art and get the unboxing started. Alright, here we have our Spider-Man Peter Parker unboxed. So as you guys can see, he looks pretty good straight out of the box. Anyways, we'll take a look at him and start with the introduction with Mafex the company. A short intro for Mafex is there by the company known as Medicom Toy and it is a Japanese brand that specializes in creating collectible toys and action figures founded in 1996. They aim to create collectible pieces of art rather than conventional toys. Thus, products are sold in limited quantities. As for our character today, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Peter Benjamin Parker, he needs no introduction. He is the superhero Spider-Man, hailing from a dimension parallel to Miles Morales, considered to be the source dimension of the multiverse. Of course, this version of him that we see over here is from and inspired by the movie Into the Spider-Verse. As for his origins, there's not much to say. I'm sure all of you guys have watched it many times, being bitten by the radioactive spider. So let's get on to the aesthetics and the appearance, the paintwork of the figure. All right, now let's go over the aesthetics and paint job of the figure then. For me personally, what really made me grab this figure in the initial place was I was a big fan of the movie Into the Spider-Verse. I thought it was very well done. If you guys watched it, let me know what you guys thought of the movie. Anyways, back to the figure. Originally, when I saw the promo shots of this figure by Mafex, I already decided to pre-order him as he seems like he came with a lot of accessories and a lot of soft goods. I've been really appreciating what Mafex has been doing to their figures lately and experimenting with more and more soft goods. And this Peter Parker Spider-Man, this version of him is no different from the Spider-Verse movie. As we see here, the first thing that we notice is that his coat is actually made out of real cloth material along with the pants. All of these gives the figure a very authentic feel. In terms of the facial sculpting of this Spider-Man, it looks exactly like he appeared in the movie and really catched this version of a Peter Parker from Into the Spider-Verse. As we know from watching the movie, he is more of a middle-aged version of Spider-Man that has just gone through his midlife crisis. And we can see that in his appearance where he has a hairstyle that's sort of messy. And we can see that he has a lot of leftover mustache on his facial features and these are nicely done by Mafex as they shaded it in this gray color. Let's take a side view of this head sculpt. As you guys can see, the facial features are nicely detailed and the hairs are nicely sculpted as well. Here's an alternative shot of the other side of the face. Whether from the front or the side, I'm satisfied with the look of Peter Parker's face in this version of the Mafex figure. Moving on to the midsection of the figure, as we see over here, Peter Parker is wearing his signature jacket coat as seen in the movie. What's nice about this figure is that we can actually remove the cloth material coat as well as the pants, and this way we have a full version of the spider suit that Spider-Man wears in the movie. But before doing that, let's check out the details that we can see with the coat being on. So even Peter Parker over here is wearing his coat, we can see the inner details of the Spider-Man suit, which is done very nicely in the bright red color with the webbing designs. And we have the signature symbol of the spider symbol on the chest done in the black color. Taking a closer look at the coat details, I really like the fact that Mafex designed this coat with a lot of seam lines and they represented the pockets on each side of the chest as well as the lower waist really well. Even the little details like the buttons, they seem to use some sort of little metal piece. So overall, the jacket looks quite good and realistic. I also really enjoy the popped collar at the neck. It is actually wired as well, so as you guys can see, this would be nice for different posing and poses. So they really outdid themselves over here having the wired coat at the collar. 
Over here, we have a side view of the code. As you guys can see, the lower part of the code is also wired. This way, we can have some interesting and dynamic poses when posing with the code. So all of the bottom part here is lined with a wire. So that's really nice. And let's have a back view of the code. I really enjoyed this view of the code as well as it looks extremely natural, which is definitely a good thing. Moving on to the lower body, in terms of the design, we do have the sweatpants. It's actually very interesting and is done in a different material than the coat itself. Just feeling it, it really feels like a sweater type of material and is very elastic, which must be good for the articulation. Here's a closer look at the pants. They're done in this very pale light blue sort of color and it really does look matching to the coat itself. Moving even further down in terms of the design and the paint work, we can see that Peter Parker over here is actually wearing different shoes on each feet. This is quite interesting and is a reference to the original movie if I remember correctly. Because Peter Parker, the version of him in the Spider-Verse, is sort of going through a midlife crisis, I guess he had issues and problems with wearing the same pair of shoes somehow or he can't find the other one. I can't really remember what happened in the movie exactly, but it really suits his personality at the time during the movie, which he sort of started to give up on life. For the right foot, we have him wearing the boot, and this boot is nicely done in the brown color. We do have details of the laces in this pale brown, pale yellow. We also have some metallic paint job to act as the lacing for the boots. As for the left foot, we have a signature looking converse-like shoe, which is also painted in white, a light pale blue, and also more white for the laces. Let's check out the sides of the shoes and the side of the other one. So definitely I can tell that they put a lot of thought into creating this figure. One minor complaint that I want to make about the shoes is, I guess it's almost nitpicking, but it would have been nice if we had a pair of each of the styles of shoes as actually over here we only have one shoe of each design so we can't really have Peter Parker wearing a pair of the same shoes. Moving on, as I mentioned earlier to you guys, we can actually take the coat off and the pants and after doing so, we have a version of Peter Parker that we see in front of us. This is actually quite interesting and a very welcome addition from this Mayfex figure is actually like having two figures at the same time. It almost feels like that way or even three because we have a lot of accessories to go over soon and we can do a full suit of Spider-Man. So let's show you guys that as well. Before moving on to the accessory section of this review, I just want to briefly talk about the paint job, also the sculpt work of the suit itself. Overall, I'm a big fan of the classic looking Spider-Man suits as I personally grew up watching the classic cartoon on the TV for the Spider-Man series. So I really enjoy the suit that looks really similar to the classic suit or exactly same as the classic suit. We have the primary colors here done in the red and blue. We also have the nice webbing details done with the black highlights. Looking even closer, we also have the small detail on the suit that we can see over here. Just zooming in, these mini bumps on the suit, which we've been seeing more and more in the newer Spider-Man figures and Spider-Man movies. It gives the suit a more textured look. So that is also very welcome in the design of the suit itself. Now let's move on to the accessories included in the figure. I wonder where I should start with accessories because this figure really amazed me for the amount of accessories that is included. So maybe we'll just start with the lower half here first because as you guys can see, after taking off the cloth goods, so we have the accessory of this coat as well as this pants, but after we take off the shoes, we have a pair of bare foot that we can switch on for Spider-Man over here. So these are included just to show you guys. Next up, we have a pair of lower legs that we can switch on for Spider-Man over here. This way we can suit him up. So let's try these out. So after putting on the leg parts, we have the fully suited Spider-Man for the lower half of this figure now. 
There's not much to say about them and they look pretty good once we switch the lower caps. Other than that, the process was actually quite easy as well. The joints aren't overly tight, so it's not really hard to switch the lower half of the legs on and off with the different accessory parts. So now let's move on to the head accessories. So we do have a fully masked version of Spider-Man, so let's check those accessories out. Here I have switched the head sculpt into the Spider-Man masked version accessory. So the one that I switched off over here actually have the neck exposed. So with switching on this head accessory, we get a whole new neck joint as well to cover the neck part. So the neck is not exposed once we switch the fully masked version on. Here we have a closer look at the head sculpt. So overall, it does look like your classic Spider-Man and there's not much to say here again. I don't really have any complaints. Let's check out the side view and also the back view. So once swapped on, we have also another Spider-Man expression headpiece. Here we have the alternative face sculpt for the masked version of Spider-Man. The only difference between this one and the other one is we can see the eyes expression is more squinted over here. As you guys can see over here, I didn't put it on fully properly. Um, it might just be a defect on mine, but it's really hard to put it on compared to the other one, which is initially on the head sculpt. What I mean by this is, as you guys can see, there's some space in between the neck and the head. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more myself, but it seems like this one might be in factory error and is really tight. So this is my real first complaint about this figure. But then again, I might have just got a lemon. Before I move on to the next accessory, I just noticed that I forgot to show you guys the back of the spider suit once we take the coat off. So over here, we have the signature red spider symbol on the back as well. And it really reminds me of the classic cartoons now, even more so. Moving on, let's show off all the hand accessories now. We have two open palms comes attached straight from the figure out of the box. Next, we got a pair of even more open palms. So these are very nice for some Spider-Man poses on the ground. Here's a quick example. As for the third pair of hands, we have another set of open palms. These ones look quite similar to the ones that I just showed you guys. Initially, I thought they were exactly the same, but upon a closer inspection, it looks like the thumb is slightly bent more inwards. It almost looked exactly the same as the other one, to be honest, but I believe this is for the fact, as I mentioned, Spider-Man have a lot of ground poses and these may be better to support him. But honestly, the other pair can do it just as well. But it's really nice that Mafex is thoughtful enough to include an extra pair of hands that's just slightly better in terms of supporting him for ground poses. So hey, I'm not complaining. For the fourth pair of hands, we got the classic Spider-Man shooting web hands and these are a must for any Spider-Man figure. Now for the fifth pair of hands, we have these open palms again, but these have a round magnet attached to the palms, and these are for if you wanna display your Spider-Man as a gimmick on some sort of metal surface. So it's nice to have, but probably personally, for me, I would never use them. Similarly, while we're on this topic, we also have a pair of these feet, which if you look at the bottom, there's two magnets attached as well. And we can actually attach this pair of feet along with this pair of hands for better support. So we have a Spider-Man with magnetized foot as well as hands. On to the sixth pair of hands, we have these slightly gripping hands and it looks like it can be good at holding some accessories that you may have in your figure collection. Now for the seventh pair of hands now, we have these thumbs up position hands. So these can act like a thumbs up for a pose or they actually can hold the webbing accessories that's included in this figure. So for the webbings, we actually have a few kind as well. We have this one over here and this one over here. One is a slightly bit longer but one has a bend at the end. So I assume you can either hold it like this for this one, same thing with this one, or this one can be a gripping one like this. 
It's really up to your imaginations of how they may work, but I can try it on for you guys just to see. So either end of the webbing accessory, you can kind of hold it with this pair of hands. The imagination is up to you guys. The possibility is endless. While we're on the topic of the webbing accessories, we do have a pair of these ones, which is roughly the same length. And these are actually just, once you take the hand off, we can keep it on the peg. And it looks like Spider-Man over here is shooting the web. And similarly, we have a shorter version of the pair that I just showed you from this set, just like that. So all of these attach the same way by taking the hand off and keeping it around the wrist at this circle. So let's try these out for you guys. As you guys can see over here, I attached the shooting hands again and it does look quite good as an effect piece. We have a longer version, a shorter version, and we do have one of each of course as I mentioned. So then again, the choices are there for you guys to choose from. Moving on, what is it? The eighth pair of hands now? He does have so many hand accessories. So this pair of hands looks like some sort of relaxed gripping hands but actually each of them have a peg near the thumb over here as you guys can see so this peg is actually for pegging another accessory that's included which is this mask over here which is a version of the spider-man mask once we take it off from the face so let's show that to you guys the idea is to use this hand accessory along with the mask accessory when we have the unmasked head sculpt on. So it looks something like this, which is quite nice. Let's take a closer look. As you guys can see with the mask, it just pegs onto the palm and looks very natural when Peter Parker here is holding it. The ninth pair of hands and our last pair of hands over here, of course, is our classic closed fists. We can't leave these out for our crime fighting buddy Peter here. So here we have a pair of closed fists for all of the action and punching poses. And we're still not done with the accessories. There's still a few more to show you guys. We also have this cup of coffee which is really nice and it's really one of those slice of life type of accessories and suits Spider-Man very well. Over here, we have it molded into one of the hands. So technically he has nine pair of hands plus one more. So nine and a half pair of hands. So we do have a cup of coffee. Just to show you guys, it's not just a white cup inside. We do have a slight paint job of a dark brown to represent the coffee itself. So nicely done. We also have this pizza accessory, which is another slice of life accessory. It's nicely painted with the crust being brown, some yellow surfacing to represent the cheese and of course red dots for the pepperoni. And yes, Peter here can hold it with one of his gripping hands, which I'll show you guys. Indeed, this is pretty awesome and you know, can't be a, your New Yorker Spider-Man without drinking your morning coffee and eating the typical New York style pizza, right? And lastly, we have another head accessory. This one is pretty much a half masked version of our casual Spider-Man face. So let's swap this on. Here's what our Peter looks like with the head accessory. So this one, I found it more reasonable to use the neck joint that is covered in the Spider-Man costume. Of course, you can also use the other neck joint. It's really up to you, the choices are there. I don't think there's a right or wrong, but yeah. Some angles, I think it looks good, but on other angles, it looks a little bit funny to me personally. Kind of like a shower cap, but hey, you know, Spider-Man is that kind of character that can be at times be very serious, but other times sort of goofy. So again, no complaints here. Just for good measure, might as well show you guys what it looks like with the neck joint that is not covered by the suit. Before we move on to the articulation, I just want to correct a mistake that I found out when reviewing earlier. I said it was hard for me to put on the squinting eye version of the head sculpt. Actually, I got it on and it's not that bad. It's just for the original one, I thought it is connected through this red piece over here, but apparently, I guess it, this red piece is supposed to stay inside the head sculpt itself. So we actually change the head sculpt through the ball joint system itself and not actually this piece. So my bad about that, I guess this piece over here has a loose round piece for the ball joint over here, which is not a big issue whether you choose to glue it in if you have a loose piece or not. 
I don't think it matters that much, but just to let you guys know that it actually has no issues changing the head sculpt and it is a traditional ball joint system. Now time for the articulation. So with the different head sculpts, I believe the articulation is the same for the head. But anyways, just to show you guys over here, we have and looking up backwards, looking down, it is sort of double jointed as we have an articulation in the lower neck as well as a ball joint of the head itself. We do have the side to side, a 360 if you wanted to. As for the arms, they go all the way up, around. We have a small butterfly joint, which means we can move the arms to the forwards and kind of cross them. So this is nicely done. As we can see over here, once you pull it out, it is not hollow over here, which is a good thing, unlike some other figures. Moving on for the waist, we have an articulation of side to side, bend forward, backwards. The lower waist, we have another articulation. It can go all the way 360, side bend, front, back. It's pretty articulated in general, so that's very nice for a Spider-Man figure. As for the legs, we can kick all the way up, even further around this height. That's the max. And backwards is kind of hindered by the buttocks design. So we can't move backwards that much, but we do have a sideways of that much. And for the knee bend, we have this knee bend over here. And finally the feet, we do have a ball joint with a swivel ankle joint, 360 front back. Just pop the feet out but it's very easy to put back in and of course the usual toe pivot that we see in many figures these days so overall the articulation is very nicely done for a spider-man figure it could have been a slightly better but i think most of it is done pretty well and it is good enough in general for a spider-man figure i know some of you guys are going to be like oh how's the articulation with the cloth material goods so here it is Let's check it out. There's not much difference, honestly. Like, you can go all the way up too. There's enough space in the jacket for the articulation, which is really nice. And all of that waist, you know, stays the same. Obviously, it might be limited a little bit, but you can still bend the elbows like that, which is pretty good. And what else? The pants is really elastic key, so you can do all the different poses. And you can even try to do a split, but you know, I wouldn't suggest it. Probably the max is like this, unless you want to rip the pants. I mean, often in real life, if you do a split like that in some sort of pants, you might rip your pants too. So anyways, you know, articulation with the cloth and whatever, I would say seven out of 10. Without the cloth, you know, 8.5 out of 10, something like that, just a reference. Now for some size comparisons, we have the Mafex Miles Morales. They look really good together, I gotta say. Might do a review of Miles too. I actually just opened him for this Peter review. I got him three months ago, I guess. But as you guys know, with the channel update, with my recent injury from three months ago, had to put a stop to filming. But anyways, it's here. If you guys are interested and wanna see a Miles review, let me know down in the comment sections too. Here we have another Spider-Verse character. And this is actually Spider Gwen, and it's the Revotech figure, which I have a custom head sculpt on it, which resembles the Spider Verse Gwen head. I would say they look pretty nice together as well, especially for picture taking. So the Revotech can work until we get the Mafex one, and we have another Mafex Deadpool. These two are old pals, and it makes sense that Deadpool is a little bit taller, as he should be. We also have a Figma over here, which is Figma John Alter Shinjuku version. Let's put an SH Vigards here as well. This is Ultraman Jeed, primitive SH Vigards. Let's show you guys one more with Marvel Legends Mysterio. So it seems like he matched pretty well with Marvel Legends size figures as well. So that's definitely a bonus and a plus. Alright, final thoughts on today's Mafex Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Peter Parker, Mafex 109. As you guys can probably tell, I really enjoyed this figure. There's tons of accessory, that's the huge bonus. This figure really does feel like three figures in one because we have a full Spider-Man body, a full Peter Parker body with the coat and the pants, 
and you can also mix and match with the two pairs of different shoes plus the Spider-Man's own suit shoes as well as the barefoot. So there's a lot of things to be done here. Even for the face sculpt, although we don't have different expressions, we do have an unmasked version of the head, a masked version with two expression, and also a half-masked version of the Spider-Man head. So I couldn't really ask for even more at this price point. In terms of the negatives, there's not really much to say over here. If I had to nitpick, I would say maybe we could have one more facial expression or the fact that the leg part sometimes popped off a little bit more easier than I expected when posing him. But other than that, this is almost like a perfect figure. We have cloth goods, a full suit Spider-Man, all of the masked face, unmasked face, and just a sheer amount of accessory that is included in the figure such as the coffee, the pizza, the magnetized hands, feet, the webbing. Whether you're gonna use these or not, it is still included, so props to Mayfex for that. I feel like Mayfex really is a benchmark for these import comic figures now at their price point, and this one is definitely worth the price, especially if you get it at its original price. For you guys who are fans of Spider-Man, especially, Spider-Verse movie, then I feel like this Mayfex figure is a must-get and you definitely will not be disappointed. Anyways, there goes the end of today's review. Hope all of you guys are doing well. If you like the video and enjoy the content, please remember to support the channel by liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate that. As always, my friends, stay young at heart and we're out. I just want to briefly talk. We're out.